Hello everyone. I appreciate you all checking out this video, and I hope you all are doing wonderful. If you enjoy this video, I would be forever grateful for a like on the video and a subscription to the channel. Alright, let's get into the video. So, there are 22 jobs in Yakuza Like a Dragon, 8 of which only provide access to one character. That equates to 2 character specific jobs for Kasuga, and then 1 each for the remaining party members. Then there are 9 jobs that are only available for the male characters in the party, one of them being DLC, and 5 jobs for the female party members, which also includes one DLC job. The format of this video will be going through each party member and then naming the best job to be using on each, and then I will also give recommendations for each character on the jobs you should reach max rank on in order to get the permanent stat boost that carry over between jobs. One quick note about these permanent stat boosts is that every character specific job, except for the freelancer job, will provide greater stat boosts when nearing max rank than any of the other jobs, so keep that in mind when I list the best jobs for stats. Before getting into each character specifically, there are some jobs that need to be used by everyone up to a certain point in order to acquire the skills that carry over between jobs. If you do not know, each job has two skills that once obtained can still be used even if you switch your job. These universal skills can be viewed by going to the skills page of a job and looking for the two skills on every job that have a red circle to the left of the skill name. The jobs that need to be used by everyone up to a certain rank include for the male party members, the fortune teller in order to get soul tether and fulminating forecast, the foreman for megaton throw, and the host for ice spreader. For the female party members, the jobs are idol for magical voice, hostess for ice spreader, and night queen for candle rush. The reasoning behind these choices is that these are all of the universal elemental attack skills, universal revive skill for the males, and universal healing skill for the females, and it will come in handy to have these on everyone, when you might really need them to do something outside of their usual roles in a future battle. And in case any of you do not know, you change your jobs at Hello Work, located in the center of southern Ichincho. Starting off with Ichiban Kasuga, his best job is by far the hero job, as it gives access to one of the best weapons in the game, the legendary hero's bat, along with very strong blunt type attacks, a move that can fully heal your entire team, full team buff skills, and finally a skill that can revive fallen party members. The hero job also has a full team status ailment removal skill, and a skill that makes it impossible for Kasuga to get one shot by an enemy, which is obviously extremely strong as well, because it is game over if Kasuga dies. But these are universal skills that once acquired will carry over to other jobs, so they do not require you to use this as your main job. To summarize this job, its closest comparison to classical RPG classes is probably a paladin, where it has decent damage, high durability, and great healing and team buffing capabilities, which is essentially Kazuga's exact role in the game as a team leader. However, if for some reason you do not want to have Kazuga on the hero job, then his next best option is the breaker job. The breaker gives access to really strong multi-hit blunt type moves, most of which are self buffing and many of them are unblockable attacks. The job also gives access to a move that can buff the attack of all allies, and a move that has a chance at healing allies. To summarize the job, its closest comparison to a classical RPG job is probably a foe breaker, where the goal is to exploit the weaknesses of the enemy and attack through their defense, except it accomplishes this not by debuffing the enemy, but by buffing themselves. The Beggar job is one of the strongest in the game, but it loses out to the hero job when considering the best job for Kasuga because of it lacking in durability, healing, and team support. Finally, the best jobs to reach max rank in for Kasuga so that he receives the permanent stat boosts are Hero, Enforcer, Breaker, Freelancer, and Foreman. The reasoning for each is that Kasuga's three most important attributes are durability, damage, and agility, so we have Hero for the HP and defense, Enforcer for the HP and defense, Breaker for the attack and agility, Freelancer for the attack and agility, and then Foreman for the HP, and the MP is useful as well, but more of an added bonus rather than a necessity. If you are wondering why I included Agility above, that is because Agility influences turn order, 
which is very important as we need Kasuga to be getting as many turns as possible as he will be healing, buffing, and attacking. So we need him to have high agility or else he will be locked into using all of his turns on healing. Furthermore, agility aids in durability as it influences evasion as well. So by dodging more attacks, Ichiban will survive longer. Next is Koichi Adachi, who has two jobs competing to be his best. Those are the detective job and the enforcer job. They both have similar purposes, but they go about achieving them differently. They both resemble the classical RPG class of a tank, except the enforcer is more focused on damage dealing, crowd control, and reducing damage allies take while putting themselves on the line, while detective is more defensive focused with making the enemies attack them instead of allies, counterattacking, having a skill that prevents them from getting one shot, and having a move that has a chance to instant kill. Both jobs have universal skills that synergize well with the other job. I would say when you are making the decision of which to use, it comes down to picking between being able to use the Enforcer's Paralysis Prong skill, which is one of the strongest moves in the game, or being able to have access to the Detective's True Grit skill, which can be repeatedly used to give immunity to getting one-shotted by an enemy attack. Finally, the best jobs to reach Max Rankin for Adachi so that he receives the permanent stat boost are Detective, Enforcer, and Foreman. The reasoning for each is that Adachi's most important attribute is durability, so we have Detective for the HP and Defense, Enforcer for the HP and Defense, and then Foreman for the HP, and the MP that comes as well is nice. Next up is Jun Gihan, who has two best jobs and a notable mention. His two best jobs are the Hitman and the Breaker. I already described how the Breaker job works when I talked about Kasuga, and the Hitman job is virtually the same, with only a slight change. The Hitman job still focuses on exploiting weaknesses like the breaker job, except the hitman is better in the sense that it has access to all types of physical attacks, unlike the breaker class which only has blunt type skills, and so it is better at exploiting the enemy's weaknesses, but unlike breaker, the hitman does not have unblockable attacks, and the hitman's damage dealing skills do not self buff, rather they apply negative status effects on the enemy. One other slight difference is that the hitman job is more focused on being evasive and being able to deal damage without taking damage. As is shown in the skill Banshee Bayonet, which allows Junki Han to go invisible, becoming untargetable, and then powerfully attacking the next turn. And he also has a skill called Phantom Shift, which boosts his accuracy and evasion. The notable mention is the host job, which some say is Junki Han's best job. What many say is the strength of the host job is the ice based attacks that can also apply the drunk status effect to enemies, which is one of the strongest status effects as it does not just waste the enemy's turn like most others it gives a chance for the enemy to attack other enemies. However, I find the chance of applying Drunk is not high enough, and many bosses are immune to Drunk, which essentially neutralizes one of the main strengths of the job. The ice attacks that the host job provides can be strong and allow the ability to exploit the common ice weakness of enemies in the game, but I do not see Chungi Han as a mage, and for that reason I lift it out of his best jobs. I still wanted to mention it though, for all of you so that you are aware and can decide for yourself. Finally, the best jobs to reach Max Rankin for Junki Han so that he receives the permanent stat boost are Hitman, Breaker, Enforcer, Foreman, and Chef. The reasoning for each is that Junki Han's most important attributes are attack and agility. So we have Hitman for the attack and agility, Breaker for the attack and agility, Enforcer for the HP and defense, Foreman for the HP and MP, and Chef for the agility and magic. I still included Enforcer and Foreman because even though Junki Han will not be getting hit that often, you do not want him to die in one hit when it does happen. Then there is Tianyu Zhao, whose best job is the gangster job, which is essentially a mix of the bodyguard, breaker, and hitman jobs. The gangster job has the blade and bleeding effects of the bodyguard job, while also having the status effect applying blunt type attacks of the breaker job, except the status effects apply to the enemy, like the hitman job, and like the hitman job, the gangster job is able to exploit more physical weaknesses than most jobs, as the gangster job has access to both blade and blunt type attacks, along with an essence attack that does fire as well. If you for some reason do not want to use the gangster job on Zhao, the next best options are the bodyguard job or the breaker job. Finally, the best jobs to reach Max Rankin for Zhao so that he receives the permanent stat boost 
are Gangster, Bodyguard, Breaker, Musician, and you can throw an Enforcer, obviously. The reasoning for each is that Zhao's most important attributes are Attack and Crit Rate, which is influenced by Dexterity. So we have Gangster for the Attack and MP, Bodyguard for the Attack and Dexterity, Breaker for the Attack and Agility, Musician for the Dexterity and MP, and Enforcer for the HP and Defense. Next is Seiko Mukoda, whose best class is primarily Idol, which is a dedicated healer class that is also capable of reviving allies and charming, silencing, and brainwashing enemies. Despite being a dedicated healer class, the Euro class still outperforms it, even in healing, because both have access to a skill that fully heals all party members, but the Hero's skill costs 10 less MP. For this reason, I do not run Seiko in my main team, because I have Kasuga on Hero, and I do not need two healers in my active party. If you still want to use Seiko, but do not want to use her as a healer, you could use her as a Night Queen or Matriarch, as those would be her next best two classes, but area using either of these jobs would outclass Seiko. If you want to go the mage route with Seiko, that is a possibility, as she is a magic-oriented character, but that would mean the Hostess job and Seiko with Hostess would still be outperformed by Namba, who has higher magic stats and access to all elemental types unlike the female characters who do not get access to electric type magic. Finally, the best jobs to reach max rank in for Seiko really depend on what you want her to do, but assuming you stick with what she is inclined to do, then those jobs would be Barmaid for the MP and magic, Hostess for the MP and magic, Idol for the defense and healing, and if you want the agility, then Dealer as well. Now we have what many may have been waiting for, Eri Kamataki. She is oftentimes regarded as the strongest character in the game, and rightfully so considering that she can have the attack of Zhao while having the agility of Junki Han. Her best job is the cloak job, which is essentially the female version of Zhao's gangster job. But what makes this job really stick out as one of the best in the game is its top weapon, which has the special effect of ignoring defense. You can already imagine how strong this makes Eri, as she has the second highest attack in the game, but she also ignores defense. If for some reason you do not want to have Aerie on the cloak job, her next best option is the matriarch job, which is essentially the female version of the bodyguard job, a high powered blade focused job with some buff and debuff potential. And other than that, you could put Aerie on any of the physical attack based jobs such as Night Queen or Dealer. Finally, the best jobs to reach max rank in for Aerie are Clerk, Night Queen, Dealer, and Idol if you want the defense. The reasoning for each is that Aerie's most important attributes are attack and agility. So we have Clerk for the attack and agility, Night Queen for the attack and HP, Dealer for the agility and dexterity, and Idol for the defense. Finally, we have Namba, whose best job is Homeless Guy, which is the damage dealing mage class with a focus on fire based magic skills, but it also provides access to debuffing skills and to the only non elemental magic attacks in the game aside from one skill that the musician has and an essence skill that the fortune teller has, both of which only target single enemies while the non-elemental magic attacks that the homeless guy has are AOE. The usefulness of these non-elemental magic skills are in their ability to exploit weaknesses. Alternative jobs for Namba would include either the musician or the devil rocker. The musician is a strong ally buff and enemy debuff mage that has a unique mechanic called voltage where for every skill performed you gain voltage, and then it can all be used to increase the power of the essence skill it has, or to temporarily increase the power of selected skills of the musician. The Devil Rocker is more of a combat mage, with a mix of physical and magical attacks, along with life stealing and insta killing capabilities. The best jobs to reach max rank in for Namba so that he receives the permanent stat boost are Homeless Guy, Host, Fortune Teller, Chef, and Musician. The reasoning for each is that Namba's most important attribute is magic, so we have Homeless Guy for the magic and MP, Host for the magic, Fortune Teller for the magic, Chef for the magic and agility, and Musician for the dexterity and MP. You could also look into boosting his HP and defense stats with the Enforcer and Foreman jobs, because one issue you might face with using Namba in your party is that he can oftentimes be one shot later in the game, and you have to constantly revive him or work around keeping him alive. Furthermore, if you are not aware, Many of the enemies in the game are programmed to target the party member with the lowest HP the majority of the time, which is typically Namba, so he will constantly be getting attacked, and since he also has comparatively low agility, his turn is always last, and if he dies and gets revived, his turn gets put at the end of the queue again, 
so he can get in this cycle of doing nothing and constantly dying and wasting turns of other party members who are reviving him. Alright, well, that is just about it for this video, but I have two final notes on this topic. One is that for all of the characters above, when I listed the jobs to reach max rank in for the stat boost, you could also add in the DLC jobs because they give boost to every stat. And second is that in order to get the job XP you need in order to reach max rank in all of the jobs, then you should check out my video I made on the best way to farm XP in the game. And if you want to potentially double the amount of XP and job XP you are earning, then you should also check out my video on all of the game's XP and job XP boosters. Moreover, I would like to take a moment and thank you all with the deepest sincerity for the support you have been showing to the channel. I truly care about each and every one of you, and I want you to know that you are playing a large role in making my dreams a reality. You are always welcome here, and I enjoy interacting with you all in the comments. Much love, and as always, thank you for being here. I wish you all the best of days. Later.